And so Jonathan said, I will find out. I will find out what it is that's made my father so upset. Because you see, here's jealousy. And his jealousy was so strong, it turned into hatred for David. So much so that King Saul was willing to kill David if when David has done so much for Israel and for the king himself. And so Jonathan went to his father and said, what is it? What, what has he done that, that you would be so angry with him? Well, the first time Saul said, no, no, everything's fine. No, everything's fine. But then later, Saul tried to kill David again. And so David said to, to Jonathan, something's really wrong. I don't know what I did to make your father so angry, but I know he's trying to kill me. And so Jonathan said, okay, I'll try to find out. And so that night at supper, David wasn't there in his usual place where he would sit right here. And Saul said, where's David? Well, the first he said, well, he, he asked to go home to his, to his father's house and that there would be a sacrifice there. So he asked to go. Well, the next night came and David wasn't there again. And so Saul said to his son, Jonathan, where is David? Where is it that, that David, why is he gone? Let me turn the page in my Bible to get to that, that next time. All right. And so he said, David said, let me go to my, for my family to have a sacrifice in the city. And my brother, he commanded me to be there. And so, please, I pray that hold me excused from the king's table. That's where I am. And this time, Saul was so angry. Saul was so angry, he was going to pick up a javelin and kill his own son, Jonathan. That's how angry he was. He said, you, why are you trying to protect him? Don't you know that while David's alive, you won't be the next king? Jonathan already knew he wouldn't be the next king, that God had chosen David to be the next king. And Jonathan was fine with that. And so they had made, David and Jonathan, had made an agreement that after he found out about his, what his father would do, whether he was going to be okay with David or whether he was going to still try to kill him, that if, when, when they would go out in the field and David would be out there hiding and he would sh shoot a bow and arrow, he would shoot an arrow, and he would send his uh, servant to go get it, his lad to go get it. And if he said to the lad, um, it's, it's over close here by me, get it quickly and come on back to where I am, that he would know that everything was fine. But if he said, the, the arrow was beyond me, make haste, go quickly, go, go away and find it, then he would know that there was a problem. And so here they are. Here's David hiding in the, in the field. And behold, the arrows are on his side, all right? And so he's, he takes the arrow, and he said to his lad, when I shoot the arrow, all right, so here he is. And Jonathan cried after the lad, is not the arrow beyond thee? Make speed, haste, stay not. And Jonathan's lad, lad ran and gathered up the arrows and came back to his master. But the lad didn't know anything about it. He didn't know about the agreement that the two of them had together. And so Jonathan gave his bow and his arrows to the lad and said, Take them back to the palace. Go your way. And after the lad left, David arose out of his place. And he went over to his friend. I don't think I have a picture of that. He went over to his friend, Jonathan, and they hugged each other goodbye. And they cried because they were true friends. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord be between me and thee, and between my seed, my children, and thy seed, not your children, forever. And he rose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. They had to say goodbye to each other, but they were true friends. Boys and girls, we probably won't ever have anything that big that happened to Jonathan and David, 
but it teaches us how to be a friend. The Bible says that when you have a true friend, you're going to care more about your friend than yourself. You're going to want to do nice things and be kind and good to your friend more than yourself. In fact, you're going to love your friend more than you love yourself because that's being a true friend. The Bible says, he that hath friends must show himself friendly. The Bible says, if you have a friend, a friend sticketh closer than a brother. But then the Bible says there is a friend that's closer than that. A friend that would lay down his life for his friends. And that's exactly what Jesus did. Jesus is the truest, best friend of all. And he laid down his life on the cross of Calvary for us, his friends, so that we could be forgiven and have our soul saved and have a home in heaven. That's the best friend of all, Jesus. Let's thank him. Lord Jesus, thank you for being a true friend. Thank you, Lord, for being the best friend. And Lord, I prayed for all my boys and girls that every one of them would one day ask you to forgive their sins and come into their heart and save them. Lord, I love my children in my class, and I miss them so much. Please take care of them. And I pray that every one of them, one day, this school year, before it's all over, they will ask you to forgive their sins and come into their heart and save them. Help them to go to their mommy or daddy or grandma or grandpa, or even just tell me when we talk on the phone that they want to be saved. You can show them how to, out of your word how they could know for sure they're going to heaven one day. And Lord, I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Bye-bye, boys and girls.